In case you hadn't heard, we're just into the start of May and that means it's time for another quarterly earnings report from Tesla. And since those figures have literally just been released, it's time for me to give you a quick roundup of what they mean for Tesla and the rest of the electric vehicle and energy world. Hi there, I'm Nikki Gordon Bloomfield from Transport Evolved, and today we're going to breeze through Tesla's official Q1 2017 earnings, which show that despite acquiring not one but two companies in recent months, troubled solar panel provider Solar City and production equipment manufacturer Grumman Engineering, not to mention busying itself with readying the Model 3 for production, Tesla has managed to grow its revenue and break its own manufacturing and sales records in the process. Now, before I go on here, I should point out that you can read the shareholder report for yourself over at ir.tesla.com. While I'm going to be covering most of the important points noted there in this video, I can't cover every little thing that's mentioned in the interests of video brevity. That said, let's tackle the figures. According to Tesla, it sold a total of 25,051 cards during Q1 2017, breaking its previous sales record set during Q4 last year. This means that it's on target to meet its goal of delivering between 47,000 and 50,000 electric cars during the first half of this year, a figure which will represent a 61 to 71 percent annual vehicle delivery growth. As a consequence of the increase in deliveries over the previous quarter, Tesla managed to also set a new record $2.7 billion GAAP revenue for the quarter, something which helped it on its way to achieving a $4 billion cash in hand at the end of the quarter. I should note, too, that total revenue for the quarter is more than double what it was this time last year, and just over $400,000 more than it was the previous quarter. At the same time, improvements in Tesla production line practices and economies of scale have meant that Tesla's Q1 automotive gross margin has improved too, settling at 27.4% for the quarter when using GAAP methods. But despite good vehicle production figures and sales figures for the quarter, something which should be pushing Tesla closer to long-term profitability, the company's recent acquisition of both SolarCity and Grumman Engineering has meant that Tesla's quarterly losses have widened substantially since last quarter, with total net GAAP losses for the quarter totaling $330,277, equivalent to $2.04 per share. That's far worse than the $121,337 net GAAP loss of last quarter, but at first glance, the losses per share seem way better this quarter than they were this time last year, when total net GAAP losses per share stood at $2.13. But it's worth noting here that Tesla has carried out several additional public offerings since this time last year, meaning there are more Tesla shares in circulation than there were then. And since there are more shares, the net loss per share is smaller, despite total net losses attributable to common shareholders is substantially higher than it was this time last year. Nearly a fifth higher, in fact. As Tesla itself notes, however, the acquisition of SolarCity, $100 million, foreign currency translations, $35 million, net losses attributable to non-controlling interests, $31 million, and non-cash portion of interest expenses, $11 million, were at least partly responsible for the increased losses, as well as increased capital expenditure related to Model 3 pre-production work, continuing gigafactory expansion, and expanding Tesla's sales and service network to prepare for Model 3 launch. Additionally, Tesla officially ceased its development work for Daimler at the end of last year, meaning that it has no additional revenue from its work with Daimler to add to its coffers. As it looks forward, however, it's expected that the one-off expenses related to its double company acquisition will be more than offset by the savings it hopes to keep moving forwards. On to vehicle development. During Q1, Tesla said that it completed the majority of its Model 3 pre-production work and says it now has completed the installation of a new body press line and paint shop preparation for Model 3. At the same time, it's well underway with the installation of the required machinery that will be needed to mass produce Model 3. With Model 3 pre-production cars now undergoing final testing, Tesla says it's on target to begin official Model 3 production this July, peaking at 5,000 vehicles per week at some point in 2017 and 10,000 vehicles per week at some point in 2018. 
What's important here to note is the wording. Tesla doesn't state that these figures are exclusively for Model 3, but rather simply states vehicle production. Additionally, you'll note that the language used here is some point, which means that Tesla could reach its goal by hitting 5,000 vehicles per week by the last week of this year and 10,000 per week by the end of next. To support that massive growth in vehicle production, which is of course down to Model 3, Tesla reinforced its commitment to expanding its sales and service network during the upcoming quarter, announcing its intent to add nearly 100 additional sales and service locations, as well as bringing 100 new mobile engineers into the Tesla fleet to better deal with increased customer volume. At the same time, it says it will increase the number of superchargers around the world to 10,000 this year and bring the total number of Tesla destination charging stations to 15,000 worldwide. In addition to its work on Model 3, Tesla says that its switch to in-house autopilot and hardware is now complete, meaning that it's now using in-house autopilot solutions for both its Generation 1 and Generation 2 autopilot-equipped cars. While not mentioned specifically in the quarterly earnings report, it's worth reiterating that Tesla is aiming for full Level 5 autonomy within the next few years. Alongside its automotive endeavours, Tesla is increasing its efforts with Tesla Energy products, with the goal to start manufacturing solar roof tiles this quarter at its Fremont production facility. After a short period there, Tesla will transition solar roof production to its Gigafactory No. 2 in Buffalo, New York. Combined with increased sales and installation volumes for both solar and battery products, Tesla said it's gradually increasing the number of Tesla stores around the world, now offering customers access to Tesla energy products alongside its range of electric vehicles. Eventually, Tesla aims to make all of its current and future stores one-stop shops for all of your energy and transportation needs. Add into this the goal of Tesla to unveil its all-electric semi sometime this year, and I think you can agree that this particular California company is going to be very busy. But as usual, Tesla's financials leave me feeling a little uneasy. Yes, Tesla is keen to change the world, and yes, it's doing so, but I can't help wonder just how much longer investors will let it continually grow without turning a profit. It's already proven that profits are possible, but with the company so eager to grow, it just keeps investing at just the point where a profit would otherwise be possible. And I'm sure I'm not the only one finding that growth frustrating. But what do you make of Tesla's Q1 financials for the year? Do you think it represents a rapidly growing company with plenty of future ahead of itself? Or do you think that Tesla is continuing to spread itself dangerously thin, pushing it towards some major inevitable disaster? Leave your thoughts in the comments below. Don't forget to like, comment and subscribe. And as always, if you'd like to support the creation of more videos like this, do consider helping me through Patreon. I'll leave a link below and a clickable one at the end of the video. I'll be back, of course, tomorrow with another video. But in the meantime, I'm Nikki Gordon-Bloomfield. That was your Transport Evolved video of the day. And until next time, keep evolving.